In this lesson, we are going to look at the length, area, and volume ratios of similar solids. This property states that if two solids are similar, then their corresponding sides are all proportional. The area ratio is the square of the length ratio, and the volume ratio is a cube of the length ratio. So let's see if we can make sense of this property by looking at these two similar solids. Notice how the bigger prism has corresponding side lengths, in other words, the length, the width, and the height that are twice as long as the smaller. In other words, they have a side ratio of 1 half or 1 to 2. But if we look at the area of each of these rectangles, that area is actually quadrupled. So this purple rectangle was quadrupled, this green rectangle quadrupled, and this red rectangle atop was quadruple of the original rectangles. We can get this ratio by simply squaring the 1 to 2 side ratio. If I do 1 squared, I get 1, 2 squared to get 4. Furthermore, the volume ratio of the larger prism is actually 8 times larger. This prism has 8 times the volume of the original. Notice 8 of these small prisms fit inside of the larger prism. And we can achieve that ratio by not squaring, but this time cubing the side ratio. So if I do 1 to the third power, I get 1. If I do 2 to the third power, I get 8. So in this first example, we're given many ratios. We're given these two side ratios and are asked to find the missing area and volume ratios. And then in these examples, we're given the area ratio and the volume ratio and asked to find the other two. So let's start with the 1 half side ratio. If I'm given the side ratio to find the area ratio, we simply square whatever that side ratio is. So if I do 1 half to the second power, I square 1, I square 2 to get 1 over 4. Then to get our volume ratio, we cube our original side ratio. So I do 1 to the third power and 2 to the third power to get 1 over 8. Similarly, we can square 5 fourths to get our area ratio of 25 over 16. And we can cube 5 fourths, in other words, raising it to the third power, to get 125 over 64. Now for the next one, if I start with the area ratio, I need to go backwards and get rid of the square. To undo the square, we take the square root of whatever that area ratio was. So to go backwards here, we take the square root of 36 and the square root of 121, and we end up finding the side ratio. And recall that to go from the side ratio to the volume ratio, we end up cubing the side ratio. So 6 to the third power is 216, and 11 to the third power is 1,331. And then finally, if I'm given the volume ratio, I want to go back to the side ratio first. We undo the cube by taking the cube root of whatever that volume ratio was. So in other words, what number times itself three times is 343, and what number times itself three times is 27. Your calculator can can perform that operation. On the next slide, I'll show you where to access that on most calculators, but the cube root of 343 over 27 gives us 7 thirds, or 7 over 3. And then recall that we square that side ratio to find the area ratio. So if you're wondering how to find the cube root on a calculator, you can take a look at these screenshots of both Desmos and a TI-30 calculator that will show you how to get the cube root of a number. So just pause the video, take a look, and make sure you know how to find the cube root on whatever calculator you're using. So let's take a look at one more example. In this one, we have two similar cylinders. The small cylinder has a radius of 3 centimeters, a surface area of 245 square centimeters, and a weight of 4 pounds. We also know the larger cylinder has a radius of 7 centimeters. So from that key information, that gives us the radius ratio, in other words, the side ratio, the one-dimensional length ratio of these two cylinders. So in question one, if we're trying to find the surface area, we need to square that side or length ratio to find the area ratio because, of course, surface area is a, repre a two-dimensional representation of area. So I square 3 sevenths, I get 9 over 49. I'm now ready to set up a proportion with that new area ratio given the surface area of the smaller cylinder that I already know. The smaller cylinder's surface area was 245. Because I wrote my ratio as 9 over 49, small over big, 
the 245 has to go on top. And when we solve that proportion by cross multiplying and dividing, we get an area of 1,333.89 square centimeters. So for example, two, we're asked to find the weight of the larger cylinder. Now weight is a representation of volume. So the first step is finding the volume ratio. We recall that we cube the original side or length ratio, so we get 27 over 343. We then can set up a proportion similar to how we did with the surface area question with the weight of the smaller cylinder on top. We set up and solve that proportion. 4 times 343 divided by 27 will get us our total volume, in other words, in pounds, of the larger cylinder.